Hey everybody, Ethan here, and you're on my side of the room. You just heard the same thing played by two different basses. The first half of that was the Sire V3 active slash passive jazz bass, and the second half of that was the Donner P bass that's strictly passive. Now, they're two very different basses. I mean, they're both black. It's about where the similarities end. <laughs> and four string. <laughs> The Sire, as I said, is active slash passive. It's got string joy, uh, nickel wound strings on it. And this is a good time to pause and mention I'm not sponsored by anybody. Everything that you see in this video is paid for out of my own money, up to and including this microphone. Uh, so if you like that stuff, great. If you don't, oh well. <laughs> but I'm not here to sell you gear. I'm here to uh, do anything else but. So, the Donner has got Fender flat wounds on it. And again, it's incidental as to what brand strings it is. It's just, they were cheaper than the Ernie Ball flats, so that's what drove that decision there. And they seem to be doing just fine as flats. Um, it's not completely fair because the Sire is in active mode, and it's an 18-volt active system. <laughs> The Donner is just passive. So I really feel kind of sad for my Donner because it's so outclassed by, well, my Sire and then anything else active that I have. Um, the volume knob really needs to get moving when you plug the Donner in because it's so underpowered compared to even my 9-volt actives. Uh, but the thing that it has going for it is just pick it up and go. Like You don't have to worry about battery dying. Uh, the thing that's nice about the Sire is you don't really have to worry about the battery dying either because you can mess around with the active mode and then if you somehow kill the batteries, then flick it to passive mode and keep going. Um, and I think the passive mode sounds just fine on the Sire. Again, I'll demo the Sire later, like in more in depth, but this is just more sneak previewing that it exists more explicitly. It's, it's been in the channel for about a month, so if you hadn't noticed, I'm telling you now that there's a Sire bass right there. <laughs> so I was messing around with the keyboard last night, and the thing I like about it is it's got different drum patterns than what my drum machine has, and a much more varied selection by genre. And I challenged myself last night, like, you know, just start going through the list and messing around with like, come up with whatever fits the drums. Cause that's what's nice about using just a drum pattern is it's up to you what key it's in, what chords you're going with, what pattern you're using. The drums will kind of dictate the pattern to it to an extent, but but when you're, you're really having to go with, play things that jive with this drum pattern. So that's what I did here with this selection today. According to my keyboard, it's 60s 8-beat. So I'm not quite sure which 60s we're talking about and which particular 8-beats, but um, I think what I came up with is just a straight 145 bluesy, chromatic-y, walky thing. Uh, but I think it just, to me, it just sounds really cool. I think, but that's me. I'm very biased. <laughs> um, I really like, you know, the groove to it. I really like the forward movement that uh, you can kind of hear it in your head like other instruments playing along with you as you're doing it. And it was just me and the drums and that was it. Um, so you at home, you've got two opportunities. If you've got an instrument handy, up to and including the bass, if you want to play bass over my bass, <laughs> you could do that. Uh, or if you play guitar or some other instrument, have fun with it. I mean, I've, I've given you the foundation. Uh, it started in A, goes up to D to, a, to E, but with some chromatic E walking stuff to work around with it. But it's, it's a very boxy pattern. But what I like about it is it's not just root notes in the end. I like that there's a little more variation on theme to it. Um, not the greatest bass line you ever heard, but that's kind of the point. The point was, first of all, to finally use the Momix to put up a, a play-along sample. And, you know, just to kind of demonstrate that 
you know, no, bass root notes aren't exciting, but they can be, depending on what you do. But Victor Wooten says, feel is everything. And a lot of people are like, well, he's such an advanced bass player, and he's talking about advanced musical theory, and he really isn't. I, I know this now. I'm, I'm sitting here like uh, in my practice bubble and realizing that, yeah, you know, it's, it's feel. So, yes, the more you learn, the more selection you've got in your toolbox to, to whip out, but it's got to fit the feel. So if I was to just shred over that, which, yeah, right. But if I'm just, you notice I didn't thump. I can thump. You know, that's that's the good news. I can do that now. But I didn't because it just wasn't appropriate for what I was playing. So maybe some other time I'll put up something else where I do some thump action and I can prove it that, yes, I can do it. Um, but anyway, just a little something for you there. I hope that you enjoyed seeing two different bases in action and hearing this little something I came up with. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. In the meantime, keep learning, keep playing, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.